Hey guys, today desk pads are getting really popular and today we're creating a designer desk pad. So let's get into it. I've downloaded the artwork, it's Stitch from Lulu and Stitch. The only editing that we're gonna to have to do today is remove the black line here at the bottom and remove the background. We're gonna be using the eraser tool on this and obviously we're gonna to have to convert this line to a smart object and rasterize the file. Convert to smart object, hit that mood. And we're gonna rasterize this layer so we can now delete what we don't need. Then we want to remove the background. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide the initial layer page to show where our artwork sits. And we're going to select the white with our magic wand tool. I'm gonna delete all the white. So now we obviously still want white in his eyes. So I'm gonna take the paint bucket tool, make that white, say okay, and fill that in. And fill his eyes in again. Everything looks good over there. So now next, we're gonna add in a stroke. You're gonna double click on your layer. You're gonna go find stroke over here. You're gonna add stroke. Now, position will be outside or inside. We want an outside stroke. And we're gonna expand that up to, let's say 60. You can even type there 60. And say, okay. You've now added a stroke to your image. So we're going to crop the page down to the top of his ears, just like so. We're going to crop it to his paws here, just like so. So now that we've done the black strokes around Stitch, we're going to create an additional red stroke for the contour lines for the laser cutter. So we're going to double click here, we're going to go stroke, we need to make sure that the stroke is red now so we can see it. And we're gonna make sure that the position is set to outside and you can have it set to 30 for your size. I'm gonna say, okay. Now that's done, we're gonna take our magic wand tool. What you wanna do is select the red stroke. Now once we've done that, we're gonna right click and we're gonna say layer via cut. Once that's done, we're gonna hide Stitch himself now you'll see that we've just got the contour lines for Stitch himself. Once that's done, we're gonna take our ruler and we're gonna pull it down. You'll see that there's a nudge to make sure that your artwork is set to the lines over here. You can see ours is a little bit out. So what we're gonna do is grab this and we're gonna nudge it just to the edge of the artwork. Okay, and the reason we're doing this is to create AR marks on the corner of the artwork for when the laser cutter reads, it's got a point for us to see that it's in frame. Now that we've got all four corners, you can see over there in each four corner, there's a cross point. We're gonna take our brush just to create a dot. Just to create a small dot, just so we can see when the laser runs through, we can see that it touches all four corners and then our artwork is in frame. Yeah, now once that's done, we're gonna take this artwork and put it into AR to rasterize it and create a DXF file for RDWorks. Okay, so once we've done all the stroke work and that and we pulled it into RDWorks and everything, now for print, what we're gonna do is remove the red stroke because you don't want that in your artwork for when it goes to cuts. Because if your laser isn't set and it's a mill out, you're gonna see that red stroke around Stitch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the red stroke now for print work, but we're gonna leave the four dots on the markers. So when you put that into your laser and you can now see where you're marking out your, your framework for the artwork to be cut. So let's quickly just get that done and we're gonna hide that. And you can see we've still got our our AR marks on the top, four, the top corners and the bottom corners. And we're gonna say save as JPEG now. That's done. And we're going to RDWorks. Now that it's loaded in, you'll see that because we had two strokes on, one inner, one outer, we're gonna ungroup this, delete the outer stroke because we want the inner stroke to be closest to the artwork so we don't 
have any red strokes done in that when cutting. Select, ungroup, select that one, we're gonna delete that. And we need to make sure that the mode here is set to cut. Now with cut, we're gonna have this as 20 mils per second. Processing mode, cut, maximum power and minimum power is set to 65. We say okay. Now that that's done, we're gonna say save to U file. Okay, now once that's all done, let's get to printing, sublimating, and cutting. The printer I'm using is an XP600 from AM, and the paper that is used is 120 GSM sublimation paper with a special coating that allows the ink to be transferred during the sublimation process. And the ink that we're using is a dye-based sublimation ink supplied by AM. Now that the printing is done, we move on to the sublimation process. The material that we are using is a two-part material, which is one part 100% woven polyester, glued to the second part, a tempered rubber that can withstand up to 300 degrees. By the way, when it comes to sublimation, things don't always go to plan. And in this video, we're going to include two things that didn't go to plan, so you guys can also learn from this. As you can see, the first problem we had here was color bursting. That is caused by not enough pressure. The reason that happens is because when the paper and material go through the roll-to-roll -roll heat press, you need the paper to be pressed tightly against the material whilst rolling through the roll-to-roll -roll heat press. And now that we've got that right, we encountered another issue. And now this issue that we've got now is marbling, which is either caused by impurities in the mouse pad, moisture, or the paper that we are using. So what we did to try to figure out one of the issues is that before we put the mouse pad and the, and the paper through the roll-to-roll -roll heat press is that we roll the mouse pad first, allow the moisture to be pulled out of it because of the heat, and then we would take the mouse pad and the artwork and roll it through the roll-to-roll -roll heat press. Now once sublimation is done, it's off to the laser machine. The so first thing is we use the registration marks done in RD Works to frame the artwork correctly for ourselves to know that everything is correct and in frame. That's it guys, another custom mouse pad done. It comes with its issues, but it's lots of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.